Using the right language when your client is experiencing pain. At some point in a client's exercise and movement journey, they're probably going to feel some stiffness, some achiness, or maybe injuries and pain. I'm sure a lot of you have come across this already. And straight away, we tend to have the mindset of, well, let's focus on the mechanics, the tissue, the joint. And that's only one aspect of understanding pain. So if we take that step back, and first of all, we can understand the brain's role with pain, and understand the words we use can make a massive difference into how someone recovers, into how someone moves. So I want us to start thinking a lot about that even before you've sort of assessed their movement potentially. So you've got someone on the gym floor, maybe they've done some exercises or maybe they've come into you with a little bit of pain. The first thing I encourage you all to do is probably just keep quite relaxed. They've managed to walk into the gym, you know, and they've got some knee pain. Well, it can't be that bad because they've managed to walk for starters. Okay, so you can keep calm and try not to put too much sort of focus on the sort of negative side of the sort of pain. And I think the best tip I can give you there is to start to have a little bit more understanding of how pain works with the body. Understand the brain's role with pain. Understand how tissue starts to recover. Because if you can do that, you are going to be more relaxed, you are going to be more confident. And if you have that relaxed way about you, and you have that confidence, that will have a knock-on effect to your client. Because if you feel a little bit tense, and I know I did in my early, early years, and I wasn't always too sure how to deal with things, that might have a knock-on effect to a client. So you might just avoid it. So a client goes, you know what? You can only, we, the only way we can get through this is if we just stay away from the knee, for example, and we just do, focus on other muscle groups. So they're going to think about their own movement as, you know what, I just need to stay off this joint. Rather than if we understand movement and maybe chronic pain and the relationship, we can start to, quite early on, give people some positive movement. So keep calm. Try and think about the language you're using right now. So these people might have come in and they might have been told things like their spine is crumbling or you've got wear and tear, your disc is bulging, whatever it might be. Quite scary language. And potentially, if I've seen an MRI report, language they might not even understand. So we've now got to start flipping on its head, start using positive language, a relaxed way, a positive way about their movement. So something, again, I should do quite early on was get a client in, assess them, and I'll be picking holes in them. I'll pick faults in their movement, pelvis being out of a line, leg length discrepancy, whatever it might be. And that was probably having a, an effect to their self-image. And we know one of the most positive things we can do for someone who's experiencing pain or injury is give them a really good self-image of how they move. So yes, make them aware of how they move. Yes, make them aware of certain areas you might want to create more movement in. But let's be positive. Let's really focus on the things that they can do. And let's not just continue to pick faults in people. Because if you can give someone a more positive self-image, that is going to be really, really powerful and to help them progress a lot faster. So as I mentioned a minute ago, focus on all the things that they can do and what they can do to empower themselves. So give them some homework, things I've talked about in the past about allowing a client to have the tools to help themselves, then they've got the confidence as well. Be positive, have an open mindset with pain and have that understanding. The last point I'm gonna say is actually nothing to do with the language you're using. It's more about stop the language, stop the talk, listen, ask questions, and if you can start to understand a client's emotion towards the pain they're feeling, start to understand their beliefs towards the pain they're feeling, you're going to have a really good understanding of that person in front of you. And that's going to allow you to make the coaching experience far more bespoke, even before you've got them moving.